Okay, so right now we've got all of our BGP neighbors configured, but we're not actually advertising any networks right now. If we do a show IP BGP summary, we'll see BGP is working, everything is up, but we're not sending any IP addresses anywhere. We're not advertising anything. So for that, we need to use the network command. And the network command works differently for BGP than it does for IGPs. You'll remember, in IGPs, it means enable the IGP, OSPF, ERGRP, whatever we're using, enable that IGP on all interfaces with an IP address that falls within this range and advertise the network prefixes configured on those interfaces. I'm not going to go through it all again here because we covered it in depth earlier when we covered RIP and EIGRP and OSPF. This is super important. I hammered this home before. If you're not sure, again, go back and review those sections. It's really important to understand how the network statement works for IGPs. Because it's not very intuitive. But in IGP, it actually does have the intuitive meaning of just advertise this network. There's no enabling BGP on an interface for BGP. BGP uses targeted unicast TCP sessions to form peers based on your neighbor statements. It doesn't use multicast hellos. So the network command does not mean turn on BGP on an interface. BGP doesn't work like that at the interface level. We individually specify neighbors. So it's a different meaning. A network statement just literally means advertise this network. So what we would configure on R1, we want to advertise the 203.0.113.64 network, which is going over to R4, and also the 203.0.113.72 network, which is going up towards R3. R1 is connected to both of those, and we want everywhere in our internet here to know about those networks. So again, it's configured under global BGP. So router BGP 65002. And we say network 203.0.113.64 and mask 255.255.255.252 because it's a slash 30 going to R4. And network 203.0.113.72 mask 255.255.255.248 going up towards R3 because it's a slash 29. Notice the mask keyword in the middle of the command there. It's really easy to forget to say mask because you know when we configure static routes, it looks quite similar as we would have IP route and then the prefix and then the mask and then where we're going to send it to. We don't say mask in the middle. The command will fail in BGP if you forget to say mask in the middle. So if you do put a network statement in and you get an error message, most likely it's for, because you forgot to say mask in the middle of the command. Okay, so we do the network command on R1. We're also going to do the network command on R2, where we're going to advertise the 203.0.113.128 slash network. So when we put the network statements in, those networks will be advertised to all of the BGP peers, and then those BG peers will advertise it to, to their peers as well. And this is how we're going to propagate the networks everywhere, so everywhere knows how to route to everywhere else. A thing to tell you about the network command is that the route in the network statement will only be advertised by BGP if there is an exact match in the routing table. For example, if you've got interfaces with IP addresses on there, 203.0.113.0 slash 30, and the next, so that would be 203.0.113.1 in the interface. The next network, 203.0.113.4 slash 30, 203.0.113.8 slash 30, etc. You can't just advertise all of them in one go by putting in network 203.0.113.0 mask 255.255.255.0 because those networks are in the routing table because they're configured on interfaces, but they've all got an ind they're all individual routes with a slash 30. There is no route to 203.0.113.0 slash 24 in the routing table. So whenever you configure a network statement for BGP, 
there has to be an exact match for that network statement in the routing table or BGP is just going to ignore the command. It won't give you an error message. It will just ignore it and it won't advertise it. So if you do want to, so for our example here, if we did want to advertise those networks with a single command, rather than configuring them individually, we have to do a kind of like a trick to get 203.0.113.0 slash 24 in the routing table. And the way we do that is by configuring a static route going to a null route. What a null route does is it means drop this traffic. So you can use it for security reasons. You can also use it for this trick for BGP. So what we do is we say IP route 203.0.113.0, 255.255.255.0, and then we're sending it to destination null zero, which means drop the traffic. Now, the first time you see this, everybody thinks, oh, I don't want to do that. It's going to drop all of my traffic going to those networks and they're real networks, but it won't actually drop the traffic. Let me show you why. So here we do have those slash 30 networks configured on our interfaces. And then we have put in that command, the IP route going to null zero. And if we now look in the routing table, we've still got the routes on the directly connected interfaces and we've got that static route there as well. And now what's going to happen is say that traffic came in here with a destination address of 203.0.113.1. Well, that would match our connected route with 203.0.113.0.30. And it would also match our static route with 203.0.113.0/24. And hopefully it's pretty obvious that the slash 30 is a more specific route. It's a longer match. So this is the route that traffic will match and it will be sent out the interface. So traffic is not going to get dropped. So this is just a trick to get that slash 24 into your routing table. Once you've done this, you can now put in a network statement for 203.0.113.0 slash 24 in BGP and BGP will advertise that network. Okay. Once we've got everything configured to see all of our BGP commands in one place, we can do a show run section BGP. So we've done this in R1. We can see at the top level, we've got our global BGP, router BGP 65002. BGP log neighbor changes. We didn't actually put that command in. It's there by default. Because this is there, whenever a BGP neighbor goes up or down, we're going to see that getting logged. We've got our network statements for the networks that we want to advertise. We've got our neighbor statements in here as well for 172.16.0.2. That's the IGP neighbor that we had to say update source look back zero. And we've also got the EBGP neighbor at 203.0.113.65. So that all looks good. Once everything is configured, we want to make sure that we are sending out and receiving routes from BGP. The command for that is show IP BGP. And that's it, no keyword at the end of it. And here we can see that we've got five different routes that are in BGP. So let's go through these different routes. The first two, 203.0.113.64 and .72, we see the next hop is 0.0.0.0. That means that we're actually advertising them ourselves. We've got a network statement on this router for those two networks. So it was 64 and 72. We're on R1 and you can see that is the direct link going up to R3 and the direct link going to R4 that we did configure as network statements in BGP. Next up, we've got 203.0.113.128 and the next hop is 172.16.0.2. That is the link going from R2 to R5. So R2, we configured the network statement on there for that link, but it's also in OSPF as well. So R1 already knew about it. So it's going to go in the routing table from OSPF. And then we've got 203.0.113.0 with a next hop of 203.0.113.65. That is the route that was advertised from R4. It's this network up here. So R1 learns that it can get to 203.0.113.0 via R4. And lastly, over on the right-hand side, we've got 203.0.113.136 with a next hop of 203.0.113.130. That was the route that was advertised from R5 to R2. So it's got a next hop of .130. R2 then passes that information on to R1 as well. 
So if we do a show IP route on R1, we can see that we've got routes everywhere. For everything that is in our own AS, it's either connected or we've learned it from OSPF. And for the two networks external, which were behind R4 and behind R5, we can see that we've learned routes there from BGP and they have been inserted into the routing table. So we do have connectivity everywhere. Okay, so that was it. That was our BGP configuration, seeing how to do it with slides. In the next lecture, we'll run through it doing it actually in the lab.